In this video, I'm going to show you how to write efficient code as well as readable code. I'm going to start off with testing for empty strings. Don't test for an empty string using a string literal. It's not fast, nor is it readable. For readability, test for an empty string using the empty member. This is recommended by code analysis, but it does test for both null and empty, which is a performance decrease. You're also passing a reference to your string to a static method, which can't be too good either. For speed, test for an empty string using the length property. Here I'm just doing the opposite. Next up, I'm going to talk about string comparisons. In this first example, the code looks and feels nice, but it can be faster. Here I'm using the object method equals to do a comparison. I can specify ordinal and ordinal and ignore case string comparison options for additional speed. This option will compare strings in a non-culture sensitive manner and simply compares byte for byte. When building strings, it's good practice to use a string builder, where a normal string would be reassigned more than a couple of times. This makes sure that the garbage collector does not do any unnecessary work. Use for for speed and for each for readability. A for loop will run ever so slightly faster than a for each. Moving on to typecasting and conversion. This is probably the most significant part of this video as converting types can be very expensive. The first example shows a very ugly, slow code. The second uses the is keyword which looks nicer but still has redundant type conversion. The third example is the best because it looks nice and only one type conversion is performed. In this section I'm going to compare a condition in conjunction with a looping construct. The first example is an unoptimal because the string is tested for equality 100,000 times. The second example would be fastest but the code is not as elegant as it should be. The last is recommended because it's elegant and fast. Avoid accessing variables through properties when they can be called directly. Do this unless the properties raise events or do something that should be done. Don't make your variables public unless they're read only. When adding multiple controls to a parent, it is important to suspend and resume the layout of the parent so that the parent can perform all pending layout requests at once. Use structs for simple types that contain only base type primitives. This example type is virtually the size of a reference. A type like this should be defined as a struct because it can be passed around with the same expense of the reference and can be accessed directly. It's okay to make structs if the struct type is larger than a reference to a type. Do not do this unless you know the differences between the struct and class code structures. The basics are to not make structs if you're going to have to box a lot of your declarations. Also, if you're going to pass the type around a lot, it would be more expensive than passing around a reference. Moving on to painting, here is some slower painting. This base functionality need not be called because anything painted in this inherited paint method will be painted over in this situation. I'm declaring and instantiating types within the onPaint method which should be avoided. I'm creating a new reference to the forms graphics object which is unnecessary in my case because a reference already exists in the graphics arguments. The image I'm drawing can be drawn unscaled and maybe unclipped for a slight performance gain. Someone said on the MSD informs that on paint background can be used for faster painting. Also in the documentation of this embed handler, it says that it's recommended to use this in inherited controls and it's not necessary to call the base functionality. Now I'm going to talk about disposing of objects. When dealing with Windows Forms controls or any other object that eats memory, it's best to dispose as soon as possible. In the first example, the font dialog is left for the garbage collector. In the second and third example, the font dialog resource is released right away so the GC has less work to do. Whether you use the using block or not, it's up to you. 
that was my C sharp efficiencies video if you disagree with anything that I said be sure to put it in the comments so other users can see your opinion